So what about this Christian ethics stuff? Glad you asked. Back here in the Sermon on the Mount, I want us to get this. And again, we must understand justification. We must understand sanctification. If we don't, we will never grasp Christian ethics. Okay? We won't. We're, we're talking about what makes something just. What makes an action just? Three things. First of all, let me explain this. I'll explain that later. Let me give you three things. Number one, it has to be a right action. It has to be a right action. And by right action, I mean it has to be an action that is right as defined by God. It has to be a right action. Okay? If God defines it as wrong, it can never be right. So it has to be a right action. Secondly, it has to be done for a right motive. It has to be done for a right motive. And thirdly, it has to be done for the right goal. For the right goal. In order for an action to be ethical, from the standpoint of Christian ethics, you have to have right action, right motive, and right goal. An unbeliever will never have the right motive and will never have the right goal. Therefore, he will never perform an ethical action from a biblical perspective. That's why Paul can say, there's no one who does good. But let me paint this picture for you. There, there's a war going on and here's the war and, and there's a, a, a unit and, and this unit in the midst of this war is fighting a battle and as this unit is fighting a battle all of a sudden a grenade comes and there is one in the unit who throws his body over the grenade now for the most part we look at that and we would say that was an ethical action what if he threw his body on the grenade because he wanted a purple heart? He wanted glory for himself. Now his motives and his goal were completely sinful. Therefore, his action was unethical. What if he's just sick of fighting and he wants to die? And this is a quick way to do it. Now his motives and his goals were sinful and unethical. Therefore, his action can never be deemed ethical. Do you see what I'm saying? We must have right action and right motive and right goal in order for an act to be ethical. So as we go through the Sermon on the Mount, here's the picture that Jesus is painting. Jesus is saying basically in the Sermon on the Mount time and time again, you know what, you guys have heard that all you had to do was this action, but I've come to tell you that you do those actions and your goals and your motives are completely off base. Therefore, it's still not ethical and it's still not pleasing to God. The Sermon on the Mount is about this. Only through the justified and sanctified life can we ever do anything that is ethical. That's the simple message in the Sermon on the Mount. Only through a justified and sanctified life can we ever do anything that is ethical. Let's look at a couple of these. We, we, we understand this idea of right actions. It has to be doing what God said. Let's look at right motives. Right motives. Uh, Romans chapter 2, verses 6 through 9. He will render to each one according to his works. To those who by patience and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, they will be wrath and fury. In other words, if you're self-seeking, two people do the same thing, but one of them is self-seeking. Got to have right action. Right motive, right goal. Uh, look at Romans 14, 23. But whoever has doubts is condemned if he eats, because the eating is not from faith. 
for whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. If you needed any more evidence that an unbeliever cannot perform ethical actions, there it is right there. Whatever is not from faith is sin. Can an unbeliever who has not placed faith in Jesus Christ ever do anything from faith? No. So whatever he does is sin. Because he's not doing it from the proper biblical motive of faith. Okay? Which again is why Paul can say, no one does good. From our earthly human perspective, we see things all the time that are good. Again, that's common grace, folks. Total depravity, radical depravity doesn't mean that man is as bad as he can be. And we can praise God for that. All right? That's the grace of God, but that does not make his actions ethical. There are a lot of motivations for it, but it's not faith. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. If I'm doing it for self-interest and not for the interest of others, it's unethical. Look at another motive. Look at um, Ephesians 5 and 21. Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. As a wife who submits to her husband because she's awed by her husband committing an ethical act when she submits to her husband. No, she's supposed to submit out of reverence for Christ. Her motives are impure if they are anything other than reverence for Christ. Is a woman who's submitting to her husband just so she can manipulate him and get something from him performing an ethical action is she being obedient no submit yourself to one another out of reverence for christ is a child who submits to their parents for something other than reverence for christ committing an ethical act from a biblical perspective no it must be out of reverence for christ by the way all of this stuff that we're learning on the Sermon on the Mount has huge implications for the way that we teach our children. Because for most of us, we're just teaching our children to be self-righteous law keepers who believe in works righteousness. Do it because it looks good. Do it because it'll embarrass me if you don't do it. We're building self-righteous law keepers and teaching them to rely on works righteousness as opposed to the finished work of Jesus Christ. Not only right motives, but right goals. Listen to some of these goals. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Amen. That's a right goal. The glory of God. Why'd you do that? That God might be glorified. That's why. Okay? That's why. Then it was an ethical action. I gave money to the poor, and then I told everybody that I did it. What was your goal? To bring glory to myself because I gave to the poor. Jesus says, then you got your reward. Nothing waiting for you in heaven. You got exactly what you were after. People patting you on the back. He talks about this in the Sermon on the Mount. When you fast, put, put lotion on your face. Don't be all, you know, maggot and everything. Some people look at you, what's going on? I'm, I'm fasting. <laughs> Colossians 3.17. And whatever you do in word or do, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. It's a right goal. 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Listen to that. It's a couple of goals. Number one, I want to be a good steward of the grace of God in my life. And number two, I want to serve my brothers. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To him be belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Those are right 
goals, okay? Right action, right motive, right goal. Folks, the Sermon on the Mount is not a list of things for us to work hard to do. The Sermon on the Mount is a mirror that reflects to us one of two things. For those of us outside of Christ, it reflects to us that we are ranked sinners in need of a savior and that even our righteousness is but filthy rags in the sight of God. Yes, but I did A, B, C, and X, Y, Z. Don't care. Didn't have the right motive, didn't have the right goal. It was sin. It was either pride or fear. So the Sermon on the Mount is going to expose that in all of us. And the other thing is the Sermon on the Mount is going to show us how desperately we all need Christ. Christ. 